Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavad Gita as it is chapter 10 the opulence of the absolute we're still on text number four and five and we've almost finished the purport we have just two more paragraphs to do three more paragraphs to do so we'll just go through this uh, we're on the paragraph beginning charity as far as charity is concerned one should give 50% of his earnings to some good cause. And what is a good cause? It is that which is conducted in terms of Krishna consciousness. That is not only a good cause, but the best cause. Because Krishna is good, his cause is also good. Thus charity should be given to a person who is engaged in Krishna consciousness. According to Vedic literature, it is enjoined that charity should be given to the Brahmanas. This practice is still followed, although not very nicely in terms of the Vedic injunctions. But still, the injunction is that charity should be given to the Brahmanas. Why? Because they are engaged in higher cultivation of spiritual knowledge. A Brahmana is supposed to devote his whole life to understanding Brahman. Brahma Janakiti Brahmanaha. One who knows Brahman is called a Brahmana. Thus charity is offered to the Brahmana because they are always engaged in higher spiritual service and have no time to earn their livelihood. In the Vedic literature, charity is also to be awarded to one in the renounced order of life, the sannyasi. The sannyasi begs from door to door not for money, but for missionary purposes. The system is that they go from door to door to awaken the householders from the slumber of ignorance. Because the householders are engaged in family affairs and have forgotten their actual purpose in life, awakening their Krishna consciousness, it is the business of the sannyasi to go as beggars to the householders and encourage them to be Krishna conscious. And uh, as it is said in the Vedas, one should awaken, one should awake, one should awake and achieve what is due him in this human form of life. This knowledge and method is distributed by the, Brahma, by the sannyasis. Hence, charity is to be given to the renouncer of life, to the brahmanas and similar good causes, not to any whimsical cause. Chakstur Milipadena, as my Sri Gurave Namaha, Bancha Kalpa Terpiascha, Rikas in the Vayevacha, Patitana Bava Evio, Vaishnavya Namonamaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adaita Gadhata, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, charity 
it is also another creation of the Lord. All of these different qualities, they are all qualities which are which are cre created by the Lord Himself. So we see Lord, sometimes He comes as Lord Vamanadev, and He came as Lord Vamanadev in the form of a Brahmana, just to beg charity. So Lord also takes pleasure sometimes to come to beg. Just like he did, he came to beg from Bali Maharaj because the demons had conquered the heavenly planets. And so the, the demigods were driven out of heaven. And then uh, Mother Aditi, she was lamenting that her sons were not able to be there in the heavenly planets and she was worried about them. So she appealed to her husband and under the direction of her good husband, Kashyapa, they had a child who was an incarnation of the Lord. And that child was Lord Vamanadev. So Lord Vamanadev came as a Brahmana to beg charity. And he went to Bali Maharaj to beg charity. Bali Maharaj had been told by his guru, the guru of the demons is Shukracharya, and Shukracharya had told Bali Maharaj, you should always give charity to the Brahmins. It's very, very good for you. Because you give to the Brahmana, we'll come back many times. You give to an ordinary Brahmana, we'll come back an equal amount. But if you give to a, a educated Brahmana, we'll come back more times. And if you give to a pure devotee, it will come back hundreds of times. And if you give to a, a great soul, it will come back an unlimited number of times. Stated like that in the Smriti Shastras. And quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So anyway, the value of giving in charity is certainly very great. And it said there are three activities which should never be given up. Sacrifice, austerity, and charity. They're never given up by saintly people who will continue to do that, to give, to do this, to give charity, to perform sacrifices, and to do austerities. It purifies even the great souls. So, uh, Brahmana, is meant to do six activities. There are six activities prescribed for a brahmana. Cannot do ordinary work. Brahmana is not supposed to go and work in the job. That is sutra. You go and work in the job, that is sutra. And if you open your shop, that is vashya. <laughs> so you, you get a lot of uh, brahmanas do these things, you know. They take jobs and go and work in the multinational corporation or whatever, even, or some job somewhere. That's sutra. You want to be engineers, means sutra. You're going to be a sutra. And uh, you want to do business, you want to open the shop and buy and sell, that's Vaishya. But Brahmana is meant to work like a Brahmana. And Brahmana is meant to worship the deity and they're meant to teach others also how to worship the deity. And they're meant to study scriptures and teach the scriptures. And a Brahmana is also allowed to beg charity and to give charity also. So it, it is said in the Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga, because the Brahmanas are very poor qualities in the Kali Yuga, that the brahmanas only do one thing in the Kali. Of the six things, the only thing the brahmanas do is beg charity. They're very expert to come and beg charity. But the other things they never do. They don't know the scriptures, they don't teach, they don't worship the deities, and they don't give charity, but they come and get charity from others. So this is, of course, not how it should be. 
And real brahmanas, they'll live according to these principles. So brahmana is allowed to go and live by begging. And but he will only He will only beg enough for himself, for his maintenance. He won't beg more than what he actually needs. He won't accumulate. He, he won't accumulate more than what he needs. He'll just take only what he needs for his daily maintenance. So if he gets more than that, he'll give it, he'll give it in charity to others. He won't be anxious to accumulate more. He's happy with whatever is achieved by the grace of Krishna. Of course, if he gets a lot, he'll, keep, he'll give it to others. He won't keep it for himself. And he'll, he won't keep more than what he needs each day. He won't accumulate. That is how Brahmana is meant to. So, uh, Brahmanas are supposed to be what Prabhupada explains why a Brahmana is allowed to get charity. The Brahmana is allowed to get charity because he is doing work which is very important. He is doing work in relation to the Absolute Truth. It's serving the deity. That's very important service. Direct, directly serving the Lord. That's uh, the highest service you can get. To be the servant of the Supreme Lord. Directly serving the Lord in the form of the deity. So that, that's a very important service. And if, if he does like that, and then the brahmana will sometimes beg because he needs things for the deity worship. Sometimes he needs flowers and he will need fruit and vegetables and grains. So he will go to people and ask people to contribute, to give something. We see Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami, he was a fully renounced person. So Sukadeva Goswami, he was fully renounced. He uh, would go to householders to beg also. He would go to beg some milk from the cows. If he saw somebody had some cows, he would go and ask them, can you give, a little, give some little milk? But he would only stay there long enough to beg some milk. He wouldn't loiter, he wouldn't spend a lot of time there in the home of the house. Just go long enough to get, get some milk. And if he got some, he would give also some spiritual knowledge. He would give some blessing. Or he would tell them maybe chant the holy name of the Lord like this. But he wouldn't spend time with them. And it's, it's recommended also people like sannyasis that when they travel, they should only spend three days in the home of the household. If you spend more than three days, then it becomes a burden. When Prabhupada went to Kenya, Kenya in Africa, Nairobi, Prabhupada was there. He would spend three days in one person's house, then he would move to another house and stay there for three days. And then three days in another house. In this way he was moving from one place to another place. He, he, because if you spend more than three days, then you become a burden on people. So it's not good to burden people, but people invite you, okay. You come, you can stay for three days, not longer than that. That's the rule. Like Narada Muni, Narada Muni got cursed by Daksha. Daksha cursed Narada Muni that you will not be able to stay in any one place for any length of time. So Narada Muni thought, oh, that's very nice. That's a blessing. Because if you have to stay a long time in one place, then you get attached. You become comfortable in that place. So Narada Muni thought Daksha was cursing him, but it was actually a blessing. 
from the latter. And so similarly, sannyasis like that, brahmanas, they, they travel, they don't, they won't stay. Usually sannyasis, they travel. Brahmanas, they may travel, may not. But uh, they're careful not to get too attached, not to accumulate too much wealth, and to keep themselves in a simple manner and utilize their time, utilize their time for the service of the Supreme Absolute Truth. Utilize their time to chant the Maha Mantra and to study scriptures. That's the real business of the Brahmana. And sannyasi, he's meant to be a Brahmana, he should be a Brahmana. Before becoming a sannyasi, he must be a Brahmana. You, so nobody becomes a sannyasi without first being a brahmana. They have to be, you know, good brahmanas. They have to be fixed on the platform of Brahman. They have to know the, the Shastra. Nowadays in ISKCON also, people want to go for sannyas. They have to, they have to study the scriptures. They have to take the courses and study the scriptures and show that they know the philosophy is very important. The sannyasi has to be well versed in the philosophy. When Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Puri and Sarvabhama Bhattacharya saw him, he was surprised because he was so young. He was only 24. And so Sarvabhama Bhattacharya saw him. He was very tall, very handsome. So he thought it would be very difficult for him to maintain his vow of sannyas. So the sannyas is always, there's always a nature, the attraction to material life, the attraction to the material world. Just like you go to householders' homes and you see, oh, they have a nice house, oh, very comfortable, and they have their wife there, and they have new people serving them, waiting on them, and they're living very nicely, comfortable. So we, the sannyasi may think, oh, I, and I'm traveling, and I'm moving, and I don't have anything, that they're having a better life than me. And so sannyasi may think, better, I should get married and become the householder. You know, they think, sometimes they think it's better to be that that rather than to be renounced. So unless one is fixed in transcendental knowledge, the mind can trick one. The mind can always trick people to think that there's more happiness in material life than in spiritual life. And so it's very important that one has to be trained in philosophy. You have to hear the knowledge of the scriptures. You have to study the scriptures regularly. And not just study the scriptures, but we have to apply it. We have to realize it. We have to practice it. Sometimes people know the philosophy very well, but they don't practice. They don't practice it. They, 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 they have a lot of sense gratification. Mm. So that's not good. So the, 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 along with knowledge, there should also be detachment from the material world. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is glorified by Sarva Bhama Bhattacharya, there's that verse I stated the other day, Vairagya Vidya Nicha Bhakti Yoga, Shikshata Eka Purusha Purana. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Sharira Dari Kripam Yastvam Aham Prabhati. Sarva Bhama Bhattacharya glorifies Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he is an ocean of mercy and he has come in the Kali Yuga to teach what has been almost lost and that is the process of devotional service enriched with knowledge and detachment. So, bhakti yoga is not just only the sentiment, not just only the devotion, but there must be also knowledge. 
Vairagya Vidya Nidja Bhakti Yoga. So Vairagya and Vidya both have to be there. Vairagya, detachment from the material world. If we're too much inclined towards sense gratification and to live in comfortably, then it will not be good. And if we don't have the good philosophical understanding, then it will also not be good. So the philosophy, the philosophical understanding has to be there. Not that we have to be a great jnani or a big scholar, but we have to know the principles of devotional life. And that is, that's important for us. So, Brahmana will be described in the Bhagavad Gita in the fifth chapter. Lord Krishna describes the vision Paramatma Bada. You know that verse in the fifth chapter? Paramatma, it sees everything equally, an elephant, the cow, the dog, and the dog eater. So, what's the description of the Brahmana? A Brahmana, dog, cow, elephant, dog eater. No, how is the Brahmana described? How is the Brahmana described? In the verse, Krishna describes the Brahmana and he mentions particular qualities of the Brahmana. Vidya Vinaya Samkhani Brahmani. So, what does it mean? Vidya Vinaya. What's the meaning? Knowledgeable. And? Learned and gentle. Learned and gentle Brahmana. Yeah. The learned and gentle Brahmana. So the Brahmana, like he shouldn't be egoistic, he shouldn't be proud, should be humble. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Amanena Mana Dena. Offering all respects to others and not eager to be respected himself. So, like that, the Brahmana, uh, the emblem of a Brahmana will be both learned and also gentle. He won't be a pushy, arrogant person, but a gentle soul. So, like this, the Brahmana will go to people. Brahmanas, householders as well, Brahmanas, may, they may be devotees, they may not be devotees. There's, there's Brahmana Vaishnavas and there's Brahmana Pandits. Brahmana Pandits are, they may not be devotees, but Brahmana Vaishnava means devotees. And so they may be in householder life and they can go and beg, they can live by begging. But they will not accumulate more than what they actually need. They won't be greedy. They will just simply live by the grace, by the grace of the Lord. Whatever is provided by the grace of the Lord, they will accept. Just like there's a story about the one Brahmana, Arjunacharya. Huh? Arjunacharya. He was the one, he was studying in the Bhagavad Gita and he read that verse. What verse did he read? Uh, the one that Krishna says, he'll uh, carry what he lack, preserve what he have. Yoga Shema Vahamyaham. Krishna said, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. And Arjunacharya thought, no, no, I don't think Krishna would do it. No, maybe he will arrange somebody to do it, but I don't think he will do it himself. So he crossed out, instead of put Vahami he put something out to say that it wouldn't be Krishna. And then he went out to beg. 
he went out to do his begging. He, he maintained his, he and his wife, they maintained by begging. So he went out to do his begging. And when he was out, that was when Krishna and Balaram came and brought all the food and brought it all and gave it to his wife and said, we want to go quick, we don't want to meet your husband again because he beat us, he may beat us again, but we, want, we don't want to meet your husband again. And so they ran away and then Arjuna Charya came back from begging and he was saying to his wife, he said, I couldn't get anything, nobody gave me anything. He went out for, so sometimes you go begging, sometimes you don't get anything. Just like Krishna told the cowherd boys, do you know the story of the Yagnik Brahmins? The Yagnapatnis and the Yagnik Brahmins. So there were these Brahmins doing the sacrifice and one morning Krishna and the cowherd boys were there and they hadn't had any breakfast and they were feeling hungry. So they saw that the Brahmanas, the wives of the Brahmanas had prepared food for the Yagya. So they thought, we'll go and ask them to give some food. So Krishna warned them, he said, well, then you can go and try. But he said, you know, they may give you, they may not. Don't be worried if they don't give you. It's the nature of begging that sometimes you get and sometimes you don't get. But don't be attached, don't be disturbed. So they went to beg and they asked the Brahmanas, my dear Brahmanas, can you give some food? Lord Krishna and Balarama are here, and they're hungry, they haven't taken any breakfast, could you give something for their food? And they just ignored them. The Brahmanas just ignored them, they didn't say anything, they just pretended they didn't hear. And so the cowherd boys came back and they told Krishna what happened. They said, Krishna said, yeah, that is the way of begging. Don't worry. Said, anyway, go and ask their wives. Go and ask their wives. And when they asked the wives, then immediately the wives came running. They brought all the food they prepared. They were so happy to bring food for Krishna and Balaram. So, some Sometimes it, it's like that. But sometimes you get very rich people who like to give charity, like uh, Jarasandha. Jarasandha was a big demon, but he used to give charity to Brahmins. He liked to give charity to Brahmins because he knew whatever he gives to the Brahmins will come back. So there was open invitation, any Brahmana could go there to Jarasandha and beg charity. So Lord Krishna came there with Arjuna and Bhima and they came disguised as Brahmanas. They put on the, they just wrapped a piece of cloth around themselves because the Brahmanas, they won't wear kirtas, this kirta, this is, this is more from the Islamic tradition. This is, the kirta is more, and it's not really Vedic, you know. The Vedic is just wrap up cloth around. So uh, they dressed up like Brahmanas and they came there to Jarasandha. And Jarasandha saw them and said, Oh, you want charity? Jarasandha knew. He, he could understand, these are funny Brahmanas because Bhima and Arjuna, they're so powerful, so big. And, their voices were so commanding, full of authority, full of shakti. They thought, what kind of this unusual Brahmin, you know? <laughs> so he said, anyway, he said, yes, what charity do you want? And then he said, we want to fight. We want to fight you. Hmm? Because Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to do Rajasuya Yagna. And in order to do Rajasuya Yagna, they have to get all the kings to submit. So Jarasandha would never submit to Maharaj Yudhisthira. So the only thing they could do is go to Jarasandha and fight him and kill him. 
and then he could do the yagya. Mm -hmm. So they came there, the three of them came, disguised as Brahmanas, and when Jarasandha saw, oh, he said, oh, now I know who you are, yeah, Krishna. He said, well, I'm not going to fight Krishna. He said, I have fought you before, you ran away. Because Krishna was Rancho, right? One time they fought and Krishna ran away from the battlefield and took Jarasandha up, he went up the mountains and no, not Jarasandha, that wasn't Jarasandha, but Jarasandha was attacking one time. At that time Krishna just left the battlefield. So Krishna is called Ranchur, one who leaves the battlefield. So Jarasandha said, no, I can't fight you, you're a coward. <laughs> and he said to Arjuna, I said, no, he said, you're not strong enough. He said, you wouldn't be a good fight for me. He said, I want a good fight. He said, I will fight Bhim. Bhima is a big strong man. He'll give me a good fight. So Jarasandha was a real Kshatriya. He, had, he wanted someone who, could, who was his equal to do battle with. He wouldn't fight somebody who was not his equal. He said, Arjuna is just not strong enough. He said, he wouldn't be a fair fight. So I want a good fight, and I'll fight Bhima. And so they fought with Bhima. They fought for many days. And Bhima, and finally, with the help of Krishna, he defeated Jarasandha. Anyway, that's an example of charity. So giving charity is a, is a science, it's an art. You have to be very careful about giving charity. When you give cows, you don't just give cows to anybody. You have to give cows to people who can take care of cows. If you give the cow to somebody who can't look after the cow, it's not good. So you have to make sure when you give charity that you give the money, you give money to people who know how to use it properly. That's important. The Prabhupada saying here that I show the only real charity is Krishna consciousness. That's the, the proper way to use the money. So you give the money to a devotee, you will use the money for the service of Krishna. If you use the money for the service of Krishna, then the people benefit. If you use the money for sense gratification, then there's no benefit. So it's important to know who to give charity. And it's a responsibility. You take charity from people, it's a responsibility. Devotees ask Prabhupada, do people benefit if they give us charity? Prabhupada said, that's up to you, how you use the money. They give you money, you have to use it for Krishna's service. If you use it for Krishna's service, then they benefit. But if you use it for sense gratification, then there's no benefit. So it's a responsibility. So Brahmana has that responsibility. He has to use whatever charity he's received, has to use it carefully. Minimum bodily maintenance, and if he has more, he gives, he can give charity. He can give charity, he knows who needs charity. So he doesn't mind to give charity to others. What there's a pastime. Jagannath Das Babaji, somebody came to him and gave charity, they gave some gold and they gave a nice chadar. And so he took it and said, oh, thank you very much, and he kept it. And the man who gave it was thinking, oh, I see, he's supposed to be a Babaji, and he took the gold, he took the nice cloth, he must want to enjoy these things. But Jagannath Das Babaji took them, and then later on he gave them. He didn't keep them for himself. So he took them to give to a poor, there were some poor Brahmana couples and he gave them the gold that they had. Well, he thought they can make use of it. I don't need these things. And so like that, Brahmanas do that. They will take money, they, they accept donations. They don't need the money, but they give the money to temples. They use the money for temple projects for different things, printing books as well, to print books. Prabhupada would get money from people to print his book. Mm -hmm. If 
people that if people came to Prabhupada, Prabhupada wanted to give donations, they put it in my book fund. They would use the money to print books. They like to do that. Okay, any question? Marash, when you say charity, some people say when you keep they earn money, a lot of money, and they give to their children or anything, but is it a charity? It's also charity because they give away to the other people. I mean family member and everything. It's that's not charity. charity. You give to the family, that's not charity. It's not charity. No. For family's project. Maybe family. family make a temple, a family temple or this, or temple, or family, some anything, good thing, or this consists of everything. Well, if they build a temple, then came all the way from Dwarka to Kurukshetra when there was the soul of the clerks. Mm -hmm. And at that time then he gave charities to all the sages and the great sages and brahmanas they came. Krishna gave charities to them all. Mm -hmm. You go to a holy place when there's an eclipse and like that then give charity. But charity is the one for them. No, other, other ashram. Well, sannyasis can give charity. Give charity. Yeah, brahmanas can also give charity. Kshatriyas give charity. Maharaj Janak would give great charity. So it's not just... Of course, most people are grihasthas. Yeah. Yeah. They're all grihasthas. How about the renounced people? You also have a Who? duty bound to give the charity? Renounced people? They can, yeah. I mean, whatever they have, more than they think they must give others. Yeah. And give it up. Yeah. <coughs> in this gone, they have the policy that whatever money a sannyasi has, it's not his. It? Actually, it's gone. Oh. Yeah. You must put in the scone bag. Well, yes, it belongs to his scone. Mm -hmm. uh, never use. Huh? When you never use this, what do you consider? Well, they're supposed to give a report every year. They ask you a report how much you got, how much donations you got. Who was missing the report? Yeah, and, and oh. how much you. <laughs> Um, and yet, how, how did you use it? They want to know. Did you, did you use some money in ISKCON project? And then you will show the, how much income this year and how we are spent. How much? No, how much our collection and how much you are spent for what purpose you are spent. You yeah. sure. No, they don't ask for what purpose you spent. They just want to know how much you use for ISKCON project and how much you give for outside of ISKCON. But they don't ask how you use them. They ask how much you use uh, spend for this is control uh, project. Yeah. Total, how much total did you spend for this one? How much went to outside of this one? Because some sannyasis they give money outside of this one. What's this for me? Yeah. 
ที่ระดับคุณต้องใจไว้เป็นต้องสัญญาสื่อเก็บไว้นะอันนี้ชนะกรุณาจัสนายูเมนชั่นดัตเดดิสไซเพิลส์อาชิลาพระบุพพัดเอ่อถ้าคนกิฟต์ดอนเนชั่นดิดีเบเนฟิตเอนช
difficult sometimes, I know it's difficult sometimes to give charity, but it's also difficult sometimes to ask for charity. <laughs> Or he's willing to give because he's ordered by Krishna. Huh? <laughs> Difficult to ask for charity. Some devotees say they don't like to ask because they just like to do drama. They didn't like to ask for charity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ramesh, another question. Um, I heard this uh, from, from some devotees. They say that. You know, at the beginning of our life, the amount of money, uh, wealth and grains that we will receive is already determined. It's like a fixed number and throughout our life it will be distributed evenly. So my question is, Guru Maharaj, um, even if we, like, if we work or we do not work, like our, our parents or people may tell us to work for, for that money, but uh, is it right to understand that even if I work or if I do not work, uh, I will get whatever that's uh, allocated to me anyway. So, is it fine that we just do not work and we understand that the money will come to us because it's determined at the beginning of our life? Is, the, is this correct mentality, Guru Maharaj? Well, then maybe like that, may not. You take a risk. The point is, everybody has to, nobody can be idle, not even. You may say, I'm not going to work, but you're going to do something. You'll find something to do. So somebody doesn't work, and somebody, he may, he may be giving food, he may be taking care of, and he may not. You don't know what is your karma. It doesn't mean that because you had food in the beginning of the life, so throughout your life you have food. It doesn't mean that. You may have food at the beginning of life, but your, but your karma may change. You may have some other karma later on in the second half of your life, where you have a great poverty, great struggles, great difficulties. During that poverty, Guru Maharaj, um, if, we, if we are experiencing difficulties and we work, uh, if our karma is such where we will still experience trouble, Will that effort make a change or anything, Guru Maharaj? Will that what? Will our effort, uh, you know, we, we, we take extra efforts to gain, so will it change our karma or anything, Guru Maharaj? Or well, it still remains? Well, me too, you don't know. You have to, you have to, <laughs> you have to, you trial and error. It's not work alone, but you have to depend on the grace of Krishna. It's not just work on a, a only work. But you have to also think about Lord Krishna. What is Lord Krishna's plan for you? So you may work. You may get some result. You may get some relief from your poverty. You may not. You don't know. You have to see what is the plan of Krishna. What is what is your destiny? Whatever happens will be the, your destiny. But what we should do is use our time for advancement in spiritual life, not just to become rich, not just to get out of poverty, but we should use our time to become Krishna conscious. That is the real business. Not that, oh, I'm poor so I cannot become Krishna conscious. No, you can be poor, you can be out of Krishna, you can be in Krishna consciousness. There's nothing wrong being poor or being rich. Whatever is the plan of the Lord, we accept. Sometimes you may be rich, another time you may be poor. But the, the, that's not important. What is important is that we're Krishna conscious becoming devotees, we're becoming closer to Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj.
Krishna Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.